Hello there and welcome back to War Thunder. Today I want to make a map guide on Norway, the aerialistic battle map. And you can see here I'm flying in the Italian G55S premium Italian fighter. And um, I think the battle in the background is rather unspectacular. So I can focus here on on all the things that are worth of interest. Norway is a rather rare European water theater map and it features, unlike some of the reskinned, rather copy-paste ground unit deployment um, um, tank RB maps, it features a lot of unique things that I want to clarify. If you hear some typing in the background, this is how I need to control it here in uh, the replay because I think this is the very best way to overcome the long distances and look at all the point of interest. So I'm playing here on the axis side. As you can see, we're spawning in the southeast corner of the map and the well allies spawn more in the northwestern hemisphere of the map. So uh, the first thing that we want to... Oh, that's a bit loud. The first thing that we want to have a look at is the, well, bombing points here on the axis side, the blue ones. So those are the point of interest um, when it comes to defending them as the axis team. And there are some interesting things that I want to point out. They are the second line of targets that the allied teams will meet. And as you can see, it is a harbor and there are three bombing points that are in an unusual shape. So it's not the usual tents and buildings in a square form that uh, make it very easy to recognize. This bombing targets, you actually have to drop your uh, bombs rather precisely on the, well, harbor buildings or on the um, things around the actual marking. There are some destroyers as well, a lot of SBA or AAA positions. And um, one of them is very, very interesting. And the long-term viewers of my channel actually might recognize this. It's this U-boat bunker here. And it is very interesting because as a uh, big bomber from altitude, you can hit it. And all the SBA or the AAA positions that are there, you can actually destroy them as well, which are on top of this bunker, and you get some extra silver lines and some extra RP. The funny thing about it is actually that you also can destroy this U-boat bunker with a torpedo uh, by hitting one of those pylons here uh, directly, and uh, yeah, that destroys the base, the bombing point, and you get the reward of the equivalent TNT that you need destroyed with bombs. If you're a BTT-1 destroyer, this is very lucrative. I have done it in the past as well with, with one of those two, but I couldn't um, yeah, do it again, so it is very difficult. And also the second torpedo you can drop on one of those destroyers. That brings us now to the first line of targets that you can encounter as um, as the allied teams. If you spawn from their side, you can uh, destroy here those two destroyer flotillas. Those are consisting of five destroyers each and they are too easy to destroy with bombs, with big rockets or torpedoes but they are not your primary targets usually for the allied team. And um, yeah, that then brings us to the point of interest, which is A. A is here the point that makes Norway unique in the case that it is going to be captured by allied landing forces coming from the big nasty island here in the back that you can see where there are the bombing points for the Germans that the Allies have to defend. More on this in a moment. A is the point where both teams clash usually. And um, it is actually an airfield strip where you can land, rearm, refuel, repair, much like on your main airfield. It is surrounded by a few uh, howitzers, arteries, uh, but especially 
um, anti-aircraft artillery positions. Usually people from the Allied team go here to harvest those at lower altitude. I highly recommend to do not this but to actually defend the landing, the landing crafts that are coming in um, that try to capture it so then you have a landing strip. Because initially the Allied team, unlike the uh, Axis team, have no landing opportunity except the carriers, to which will come in a moment. So this airfield strip is usually where a lot of Allied players go down and uh, fight. And this is not really that... Uh, you know, to be recommended as you are low on altitude, low on, e uh, low on uh, energy and easy to pick apart. That then brings us to the few light cruiser flotillas. There are three on this map from the uh, Allied team and they need a bit more to be destroyed. So for a single destroyer, it requires two torpedoes from the uh, German or the Italians. And that makes the Italian uh, heavy bombers a bit unspecial because they can destroy maximum one light cruisers despite having three torpedoes. They are bombarding the landing strip but with little to no effect. It's a bit more show and I actually like this that there is a bit of show. So some German um, bombers actually want to drop their bombs on them and they actually can do so but it requires one ton of bomb load. So a single 500 kilogram bomb will not do. And again, there are overall 15 of them in uh, three, five light cruiser squadrons with the least interesting being this one here on the outside. And that then brings us to the main target for the Axis team, which is here the island that I call the Flak Island. So you can see, much like on the uh, German bombing points, the three bombing points are clustered very closely together, escorted here as well by a few destroyers. And um, there are also a lot, and I mean a lot of uh, AAA positions on the entirety of the island, and they are shooting wildly. So it is really not to be recommended to approach this island with um, too low an altitude. I tried in the past to drop a big bomb like here and do damage to both uh, the uh, bombing points, but it doesn't really work with the even the Heinkel one um, with the uh, Heinkel 177 uh, with the 1,800 kilogram bomb or in the IL-28 with the three ton bomb. It just simply doesn't work. While on a normal bombing point you could drop the bomb even a little bit in excess of the actual square that the buildings form uh, and still do damage to the base, it just doesn't do, uh, do it here. Sadly the hitting areas do not overlap. That then brings us also to here those um, carriers and those carriers are interesting as they provide a moving landing platform uh, to the allied teams so carrier born aircraft can land here with ease and even if you're a very skilled pilot you can land on them with um, without a landing hook and this is practically Norway. One final word or a few final words on how Norway plays out. It is a different map. It's one of the oldest map within War Thunder. I like the rough look of it. The air is cool. It provides a lot of uh, cooling power for uh, otherwise overheating engines, much like the Italian engines are very known to overheat very fast from the word go with war emergency power. And on Norway, they can cool their engines for much longer with manual engine control, as for example on Sicily, which shouldn't come as a big surprise. And I think it is a bit of a shame that Norway doesn't often guarantee you here an interesting fight. It is a big map. It is a huge map. Very often it is known in a bad way amongst bombers that they are space climbing. So back to the German team. What are the tactics actually? Um, and if I could find here myself, as you can see, I try to uh, climb here. And uh, the way that I do it is practically I climb into the direction of our bombing points, climb, climb, climb. And I just observe if I see any 
dot. And there are two ways that enemy bombers approach this. First of all, there are some, um, some guys that rush in at lower altitude. You just have a good contrast over the ocean and then you can either call them out for your team or pick them apart yourself. If you don't see anybody flying directly to the bombing points, sometimes you also have to observe the destroyers if they are SPA or again triple a shoots uh, somewhere you see the tracers even um, at longer distances and then you can actually see where the tracers cross and usually then there is also a black spot to be found which again um, is mostly an enemy player or you climb to high altitudes five six thousand and then you see from this direction as you can see on the minimap where the spawn locations are for the enemy aircraft bombers coming in and um, so you can intercept them as well usually the most that the 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 one thing that the german team does or the uh, axis team rather is to go together in close formation climbing uh, somewhere between those two destroyer flotillas and intercepting here the uh, allied teams. From the allied's perspective, it is looking like this. So you can actually see here the destroyer flotillas. Um, this guy here that I randomly picked is going into an attack run for the bombing points. He obviously gets spotted, he obviously gets intercepted and destroyed because he made the approach so obvious uh, side tech, uh, tactic is here to do a little bit of uh, side climbing not so much for going um, to higher altitude but to you know get um, a chance to turn in later on and have a run after the german team goes towards b to defend it to attack the allied players and um, again i think it's not very lucrative to go here towards a to pick apart the few SPA or triple A and howitzer and artillery positions. They're just not worth it. You would throw away your plane. Rather climb here above the landing crafts that are um, going towards A and just uh, observe them. And maybe you go to an attack run uh, on those planes from the access side that try to destroy them in order to prevent a getting captured one final note even though you might decapture a as long as it is not completely captured by the allied forces the landing crafts it still counts as an access landing port so please keep that in mind you also could climb to higher altitudes and uh, intercept german bombers so this is rather the only target that German bombers could attack. The carriers are rather sturdy and even three torpedoes are not enough to actually kill one of those carriers. So that is a rather useful information. Um, in, I guess, 99.9% .9 of all cases, again, it is a case of who destroys whom first or which team gets um, rooted out first. That's it for me today from this map analysis. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, let me know which kind of climbing tactics you make. Uh, as always, it is recommended to climb together, to stick together, to call out targets, to do useful teamwork. That, us that usually um, wins you the game. Don't throw away your plane for just a few unimportant ground units. And uh, even if you have a huge potential of destroying multiple and multiple of those uh, destroyers and or light cruisers, it's usually not enough to win by points. It's always a death fight. And with having said this, um, thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you want me to have a look at another map, a tank RB or air RB, doesn't really matter, uh, point it out in the comment section. And um, yeah, we'll see each other on the battlefields and in the skies of War Thunder.